welcome back to the Spoonie Stitcher channel. I'm Shannon the Spoonie Stitcher. You're inside the stitchery and I am so excited. Charlie Brown Christmas Tots. Charlie Brown. I tried to make him authentic to the picture as possible. Linus. Complete with his blankie. Now, Linus's blankie is not in this tutorial. Linus's blankie is a Facebook group exclusive written pattern. If you want Linus's blankie, you have to join the Facebook group down below. It's so easy, but you have to answer the questions. I'm getting lots of requests to join, but nobody's answering the questions. Nope, you gotta answer the questions. It's going to be an exclusive for my group because my group's been really sweet this year and I thought they could use a fun little special treat. If you want to make Charlie Brown and Linus, keep watching. Grab your hooks, grab your yarn, and let's make cute little Christmas tots. Lay out your fingers like this. So my thumb is up, my pointer finger and my middle finger are faced like this. Take my yarn and drape it over my fingers, like so. Take my thumb, pinch that yarn. My other hand will wrap the yarn in an X formation. Now I'm going to turn my entire hand, take my ring finger and my pinky and hold that yarn. Take my hook, right now the head, that's what this part is called, the head is facing me. I need it to face downward. Going to slip my hook under this first loop and use my head to catch this and pull it. Now tip my hook like so. Spin my hook. Now don't hold too tight anywhere, otherwise you won't be able to do the next step. Now I'm going to take my hook and grab this yarn and pull it through the little loop we just created. Like so. And now look at this. You can let go and everything is attached. make a slip knot, chain two, you're going to make six single crochet in your little hole here. So one, take a stitch marker, there you go, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Our first stitch is right here. We're gonna go straight in to the second round. We're gonna increase in every stitch around, so we're gonna have 12. One, two. We're gonna mark that first stitch, just so we know where to stop. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. If you have a magic ring, pull your tail. If you don't have a magic ring and you have a chain two, still pull your tail. As tight as possible without breaking the yarn. You still have a small hole there. So we're going to remove our hook. Uh, magic ring people, you don't have to worry about this. So just hold tight for a second. 
we're gonna get our needle, okay? We're gonna thread the small tail. And on the back, we have these funny little loops that stick up like this. We are gonna go in and out of all of those loops, but only the ones in the center. If it's too far out, skip it. There should be about six because that was your base. And then, whoop, that one is not, there we go, okay. We're gonna pull tight. Look, it's gone. Okay, so you might want to tack it down a little bit, put it through a couple of stitches so it doesn't come out. But other than that, you're good. There, now you can make Amigurumi too, even if you could not figure out the magic ring. There we go. I totally understand. It took me years to figure out a way that I liked to do the magic ring. For round three, we are going to stagger our increases. So what we're going to do for round three is we're going to make two single crochet in the same stitch or increase, mark our first stitch, and in the next stitch, there we go, and in the next stitch, we are going to make one single crochet. And that will be our pattern. Two, one, two, one, two, one, till we have 18 stitches around. It is perfectly fine to say it to yourself. Two, one. Two, one. I will meet you at the end of round three. Okay, you should have 18 stitches. Here is a handy hint on knowing if you did it right. So if you started with an increase, which is two stitches, your very last stitch of that row should be a single crochet all by itself. You still need to count, but that's a good way to kind of figure out if you did it right. Now, for a staggered increase, we are going to do the opposite in the next row. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the single crochets. So in the first stitch, we're going to make one. In the next stitch, we're going to make another one. So that's one, one. And then in the third stitch, we're going to make the increase or two. So that is our pattern. One, one, two, one, one, two. Now, why didn't we just start with the increase like we did in the last one? Because we want a circle and not a hexagon. One, one, two. Just keep saying it to yourself. One, one, I will meet you at the end of round four. You should have 24 stitches. For rounds five and six, you're just going to make 24 single crochet all the way around. So take out our stitch marker. And to let myself know that I am not doing any more increases, I am just going around and around, I like to put my stitch marker on the side. It's not in my way. And as I create rows, they make a nice little line I can follow to see how many rows I've got. So that's just a trick that I like to do. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. But you need to go around um, two times. So rounds five and six are 24 single crochet all the way around. I will meet you at the end of round six. Okay, I have one stitch left for round six, and this is where I'm going to change colors. We are going to use the method that I like to call the almost perfect color change. I have a tutorial all about it, but I will show you here as well. We are going to make Charlie Brown, because he is the star after all. So we are going to change to our red color. Now, your base is black, my base is blue, so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to insert my hook into the final stitch of row six. I'm going to wrap my yarn and pull up and pull it through. So I've got two loops on my hook. Now I'm going to hold it. 
I'm going to take my new color, which is red or orange, and I'm going to drape it with the tail facing me and pull it through the two loops. I'm going to now tighten my base color and the tail of my new color. Then I'm going to grab my new color and grab my old color. And this is my favorite part, twist. Now pinch your old color, let go of your new color and you can pick it back up again. And that'll hold it in place until you make your first stitch. Round seven is going to be slip stitches in the back loop only. So here is our back loop right there. And we are going to make a slip stitch all the way around. Now, if you are a tight crocheter like me, <laughs> you need to be a little careful in this round because you are going to have to go into these stitches. So make them taut, but not super tight. So try and loosen your tension just a bit. If you're a loose crocheter, you might want to try and tighten it just a bit because you don't want any holes either. So you're just going to make 24 slip stitches. Just every stitch you've got, use the back loop. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to do 24 slip stitches in the back loop all the way around. Make sure you get this one. There you go. Yeah, can't forget any because you need all 24. So if we were using this color again in our project, I would say leave it, but we're not. We don't need black again, so trim it. And you're done. You don't need that color anymore. For round eight, we are still go doing our color method. So we are going to, in the back loops of these stitches, we are going to make single crochet. So right there. In the back loop of all of these stitches, I know that there looks like there's a hole. I promise you that goes away. So don't worry about it. Just single crochet in the back loop of all of your red or orange stitches. See what I mean? Why you have to make those a little bit loose? Because sometimes they're a little tricky to get into. There we go. So just single crochet in all of those stitches in the back loops all the way around. You'll have 24 stitches. I will meet you right before the end of this round. Okay, this is the very last stitch in the... Uh, in round eight. Don't miss it. It's right there. It's usually small. There we go. Okay. Rounds nine through 11, you're just going to single crochet around, you know, just around. And what I like to do is mark right here. So as we go around, so rounds nine, 10, and 11, that's what you're gonna do. You're just gonna go around and around for three rounds. We're gonna switch to our skin tone. So whether you have Charlie Brown or Linus, you will do this. Now, remember what we did in rounds seven and eight, that's what we're gonna do again. So I'm not gonna walk you through it like I did for seven and eight. If you need a refresher, of course, go back to those steps but I will get you started, of course. I'm gonna show you guys actually another way to change color. So you pull a loop out. Now you see these two stitches, your top stitch right here that's sitting on top like that, and this one right here that's on the side. Okay, if you take your hook and slip it through these two like that, then you get your new color with the tail facing you and pull it through those like that. And now just start crocheting in whatever you're supposed to do for your next round. For us, we are going to slip stitch in the back loops only. And we're gonna do a couple of those. Yeah, we'll do three for good measure. Okay, 
Now, this is so cool. We tighten our new color just a little bit, just a little bit. And then remember this loop? We can now pull it and there we go. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So that is another way you can change color if you like. So we are just going to slip stitch for 24 stitches all the way around and I will meet you at the end of round 12. Okay, your stitch count has not changed. You still have 24 slip stitches all the way around. Now, just like we did in round eight, in round 13, we are going to single crochet in the back loops all the way around and you'll have 24 of those as well. For rounds 14, 15, and 16, just go around and around and I will meet you at the end of round 16. I'm going to pull my hook up and I'm going to pause and you can snip your skin color if you want to. We're gonna put in the safety eyes. So whether you have Linus or Charlie Brown, it's all the same. I'm going to find the middle with my stitch marker here and I'm gonna kind of flatten him like this. So I can kind of get an idea of where the middle is on the front. And I'm going to use my six millimeter safety eyes. We are going to put our eyes between rows 15 and 14. So right here. We're gonna just kind of approximately figure out where our middle would be. My middle would be about here. So we are going to pick a middle stitch. So I'm gonna say the middle stitch is here. Okay, and that middle stitch is gonna tell us how many places to move our eyes. So one, two, three, and put it under that third one right there. And then with this one, we're gonna do the same thing. We've got one stitch, two stitches, three stitches right there. And that's where our safety eyes will go. So there'll be five stitches in between. So one, two, three, four, five. So find your middle stitch, go over two, find your middle stitch, go over two. That's how you put in your safety eyes. And then of course, put on your backs. Now is an excellent time to stuff. Now you want his bottom to be kind of flat. So we want, we want him to be able to stand up by himself. So you might have to help him out there. And I've got my fluff that I'm going to break apart to make it fluffier. And I'm going to just, I'm going to use the table so that I get kind of a flat bottom. And we're going to stuff up to his neck only. So just up to his neck. Otherwise the fluff might get in your way. But this is to help us kind of establish his base. And again, this is Charlie Brown or Linus. Okay, so after you've stuffed them um, however you like, now we are going to make the hats. If you are making Charlie Brown, you will use brown. If you're making Linus, you will use green. I am making Charlie Brown, so I will use brown. Now, uh, normally there would be a round for hair, but the boys don't really have hair. Well, they do, but we're not going to do it in this round. So we're gonna move on to their hats. So grab your hat color. And we are going to add it. Remember, go through the top loop, go through the side loop, or you can do the twist method. I think this one's actually a little easier. We are going to slip stitch in the back loops like we've been doing. Pull my little brown tail here a little bit so it's a little tighter, okay. Make a couple of stitches just to make sure. All right, now pull the tail. There we go. Now just slip stitch in the back loops all the way around and I will meet you at the end of round 17. Okay, you should have 24 slip stitches in round 17. Now, if you got ahead of me and you decided, oh, the next round will be the single crochet all the way around. Nope, not for this one, sorry. This one is the half double crochet in the back loops. So we are going to wrap our yarn 
and go through the back loop, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, pull through all three. We're going to do that in every back loop all the way around. And the next round is another round of half double crochet, but this time we go through both loops like normally. So half double crochet all the way around for row 19 and I will meet you at the end. Okay, so at the end of round 19, you're thinking his hat looks ridiculous and you're right, but trust the process. So I would take this opportunity to stuff a little bit more if I were you. because when we start decreasing, it'll be a little harder to stuff him. You just wanna give yourself enough room at the top so you have some working room so you don't get your hook stuck on the stuffing, which I've done multiple times. <laughs> Round 20, we are going to decrease. So we are going to do the invisible decrease. And if you've never done it before, don't worry, I will show you how. You are going to take your hook and go under the front loop of this stitch and don't do anything else. And then you are going to go under the front loop of the next stitch. Now you have three loops on your hook and you're probably at some kind of angle. Now you're going to wrap and bring your hook through these two loops only like that. Now you've got two loops on your hook. You're gonna wrap and bring your hook through the last two. That is the invisible decrease and I would mark that stitch. Now in the next stitch, uh, well in the next two stitches, we're just gonna single crochet. Now we're gonna invisible decrease again. So under the front loop, under the front loop, wrap, go through two, wrap, go through two, single crochet, one, two, under the front loop, under the front loop, go through two, go through two, single crochet, one, two. So you're just going to do that all the way around. We'll do it one more time with you. Under the front loop, under the front loop, go through two, go through two. Two single crochet in the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around and you will have 18 stitches. At the end of round 20, you should have 18 stitches. Now we are going to move on to round 21 and we are going to single crochet in the first stitch. Just a regular single crochet. And then we are going to invisible decrease in the next stitch. So remember, under the front loop, under the front loop, go through two, go through two. That's our pattern. One, decrease, one, decrease. You'll have 12 stitches at the end of round 21. I am going to stuff some more. This is probably the last round where stuffing is possible, so I would do it if I were you before we go to our last round of this hat. Okay, this is the final round of the hat. We are just going to decrease all the way around and you'll have six stitches when you're done. So just go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Fasten off with a decent tail about that long and pull your hook out there you go now we're going to close the hole there are lots of methods to close a hole this is one of the ones I like we are going to go under the front loop and under the front loop kind of like we did with the invisible decrease and we're gonna do that three times two and three. Pull tight. 
stick your needle through the middle like that and go out somewhere in his hat. And then you can go back and forth a couple times just to make sure it doesn't come out, especially if you're giving this to a child. Okay, pull up so that it is fighting you. Snip as close as possible and it should get sucked back in and if not, just kind of massage it around. So his hat still looks ridiculous, but again, trust the process. We're not done yet. <laughs> so you see where your skin and your hat meet? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right here. That is where we are going to attach our yarn. Simply drape it on your hook. Whoop, right like that. Pull it through and chain one. Okay, and just to snug it down. So we are actually going to chain two. So we're gonna chain again. <laughs> we're going to make nine double crochet across the front of this hat. So we're going to make a double crochet in the nine stitches across the front. Just kind of slip your hook underneath there. Okay, so once you've got nine double crochet across the front, yes, our chain two counts. Then we are going to just turn. We're not gonna chain anything. We're just gonna turn and we're gonna do nine single crochet across the front. So one, two, eight, and nine, which could be a little tricky. Okay. Now we are going to chain one and we are going to as evenly as possible slip stitch down the side of this chain. There's no real way to do it. It's just if you find a spot that looks like you can stick your hook into it, do that. <laughs> you should do it about three times. And then make sure you also slip a stitch into the base. And there we go. So now we are going to hide our tails just somewhere in the hat. Okay, now Charlie Brown has two little flaps on the side of his hat. And we are going to add those now. Okay, so to make the flaps, we count over one, two, three, four. So we're gonna add our yarn here, just like before. Pull it through. And this time we're gonna chain two, one, two. Okay, we're going to double crochet in the next few stitches. So one, two, three, and four, which is right next to the stitch where we added the, the brim. We're going to turn. We're going to skip over this stitch entirely and just go straight into the next one with a single crochet. Then we're going to single crochet in the next one. And single crochet in the chain. Just skip this stitch entirely. We're going to turn and we're going to skip this stitch, go into the next one, and go into the last one. That's it. We're gonna fasten off with a semi-long tail. Not much. About like that. Okay. 
and we will just sew it up here. I know, I said there was minimal sewing, minimal. So we're just gonna hold it up here and we're just gonna sew it to the top. Just a few stitches in and out, nothing fancy. Just so it looks like his little flaps are up here. Okay, I'm actually gonna leave this long tail, I'll show you why. And I'm gonna hide this short tail. We're gonna do that on the other side now. But this time we have to start next to here and then go across five stitches. So we're gonna start right here in the stitch right next to the brim and do exactly what we just did. We're gonna chain two, one, two. We're gonna double crochet in the next four. One, two, four. We're gonna turn, skip this stitch, go into the next one with a single crochet. Single crochet into the next stitch and single crochet into the chain, skipping this stitch entirely. We're gonna turn, skip this stitch, go into the next one and go into the last one. which might be tricky. Come on, come on, there we go. Fasten off with a semi-long tail, pull your hook out and stitch to the top. You just want it to be on top, doesn't have to be fancy. Just go in and out as many times as you like just so that this piece is attached. Again, if you're making it for a small child, please make sure that you stitch this on really well. Now, I'm also going to go out the same stitch that this other tail is coming out. So that I can tie them together like that. It just makes it more secure. And go out the back somewhere. And this time they don't have to go through the same hole. Now just fasten off and hide all your tails. Okay, Linus's hat is a little bit different. So you did the row where you did the slip stitch in the back row and then you did the half double crochet in the back row. So now we are going to do a row of single crochet all the way around. And you'll still have 24 stitches. So sorry, I got started on the row and I forgot to record. <laughs> but anyway, this row is, um, we are going to do an invisible decrease and then we're going to do two single crochets in the next two stitches. So the invisible decrease, in case you didn't watch the Charlie Brown part, you go under the front loop, under the front loop, kind of at an angle, and then you'll pull your yarn through two and pull your yarn for the next two. And then the next two stitches are just single crochets and then here we go again, we're gonna decrease. We're gonna go under the front loop, under the front loop, go through two, go through two. That is an invisible decrease. So that is our pattern. We are going to decrease, and then single crochet in the next two. And you should end on a single crochet because you started with a decrease. Make sure you have 18 stitches around. This is a good time to stuff a little bit more, but you don't want the stuffing in your way, so make sure that it's not too high yet because you don't want to catch your hook on it, which I've done several times. <laughs> Isn't he cute? 
Okay. So the next round, we are going to single crochet in the first stitch and decrease in the next two. Because it takes two stitches for a decrease. Get it? Yeah. So we're going to single crochet in this stitch. And of course, we're going to mark it. There we go. And then we are going to decrease in the next two like this. Go through two, go through two. And that's our pattern. One decrease, one decrease. And you will have 12 stitches at the end. I will meet you then. So if you want to stuff, now is a good time because this should be the last time you'll probably be able to get stuffing in there. So stuff as much as you want before we start the next round. Okay, we are almost done. So the next round is just decrease six times. And I don't use a stitch marker for this part, I just count. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, fasten off with a long tail. Pull your hook out. Get your needle. We're going to close the hole. Now, we are going to close the hole in a different method in case you didn't like the last one. We are just going to go in the front loops of all six stitches. So we're just gonna go in the front loop like this, just like that, just the front loop. Okay. You should have six of those and then a pull. And that closes your hole like that. Then we are going to go down through the center out through the hat somewhere doesn't really matter where just go in and out a couple times just so it's secure okay now I cut such a long tail I'm going to use this tail and we're gonna do the false French knot if you don't know what that is I'm about to show you Take a piece of yarn, hold it like this, act as if you are about to tie it into a knot. Take one side and wrap it around, uh, in this case, four times. One, two, three, four. Take the other side and do the same. One, two, three, and four. Keep your fingers inside, pull. This one takes a little, <laughs> adding that extra knot actually does make it a little harder. So keep pulling slowly, slowly until you have a knot. Now push the sides in so that you have more of a ball shape than a little cone shape. And then tie a knot to go directly over that knot as best you can like that so you have a little ball now in our case we're going to do that one more time make sure it goes over what you just did there we go and that is going to be the top of his hat <laughs> I also use this instead of safety eyes when I give um, dolls to children if they're very very young we're going to go in the center and then out the side somewhere like this so that our ball will sit in the center. And then we'll take the other one and go very close to it, but not quite. We don't want it to be the same stitch. Right there. And then we'll go in and out a few times to make sure that it stays. If you have any like warping, you just kind of massage it out. 
That's the nice thing about acrylic yarn. It's nice and flexible. Okay, now I'm going to go out the same stitch as this one right here. Whoop, but not through it. Don't do that. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to tie a knot so that our little bobble will stay in place. Then I'm going to just find a place somewhere. And fasten off. There's one more thing we have to do to little Linus. Oh, isn't he cute? His hat is a little knit cap, so we are going to add a cute little ridge to look like it's folded up. Okay, I'm going to pick where I started the color of this cap, right here. That's where I'm going to add my yarn. Then I'm going to drape my color and pull it through. And chain one. And kind of fasten that down. There we go. Now in that same stitch where I chained one, I'm going to make a single crochet. And then I'm going to just single crochet around. Now, yes, I did consider doing the half double crochet, but I thought that was too bulky. So I like the single crochet. You can do what you want. If you want to, just single crochet all around these stitches right here. And I'll meet you at the end to show you how to finish. Okay, so you probably have uh, this huge gap in the back and you're wondering, how do I do that? Well, actually, the first thing you're going to do is um, you're going to skip all the way over to the very first single crochet you made and you're going to slip stitch into it. And you're just going to pull really tight. There we go. To close the gap. Now you're going to fasten off and your needle is going to do the rest of the work. So we are going to do what is called an invisible uh, finish. I think that's what it's called. So we are going to skip this stitch, go into this stitch with our needle, and we'll have kind of a loop here, right there. And now we are going to go in the middle of the stitch we went, we came out of right here. So we're going to go between the two stitches like this. And it kind of creates a fake looking stitch. See? Now you can't see which one is the fake one and which one is the real one. So now we're just going to hide our tail. <laughs> okay, now his jacket needs a collar. So we are going to find the two stitches in the middle. Here we go. Okay. Between the eyes, there are two stitches that should kind of speak to you. Um, you can obviously push his hat brim back so you can see. And um, these are the two stitches where the points of the collar will be. So, I'm going to add our red. And we're going to chain one. Okay. We're going to half double crochet in this stitch. And half double crochet in the next two. Now we are going to single crochet around until we get to this side and we are going to skip one, two, three, right there. Yeah, so that's where we're gonna stop. And if you wanna mark that, that's a good idea. So all you're gonna do is just single crochet in these little loops all the way around until you get to the marked stitch. 
Okay, quick note, when you get to the back here, you have this funny little color change. Just skip over it. Unless you see one of these, unless you see a red stitch that looks like this, don't even worry about this section. Just skip right over to this. See? Nice and clean. Last one. Okay. Now, remove the stitch marker. And we are going to half double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. Now we are going to chain one and fasten off with a eh, medium tail. Okay. Now we want his little collar to make sure that it has points. So we want this to make sure that it doesn't get, get um, smushed when we sew it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, on the side here, Go right next to where you fastened off and just go through it a couple times. Now that should hold your point in place. And then you can just kind of sew down to get to the body. Then you can go out the body. And that should, you can kind of hold it in place. There, see, now my collar has a point. Now for the other side, the side where we started, I should have made my tail longer. Hmm. Well, for me, this could be a problem <laughs> because my tail's too short. But uh, here, we'll just add a new piece. <laughs> okay. If I had made my tail long enough, <laughs> well, I've never made it that short before. Okay, so. You're just going to go through, and again, you're just going to kind of wrap it around that little point a few times in the same spot. And then you can go down the edge close to the body. Okay, move the hat. There we go. And then you can go out the body. There we go. Okay. Now, uh, <laughs> excuse me while I get rid of these other tails. All right, so this step is completely optional, but um, I have a little bit of crochet thread here, and I am going to create the line on his jacket so you can see just where it is. So if you want to do this step, then please do. So I'm going to find the middle where the two flaps are and this tiny little stitch, which isn't really a stitch, it's, you know, one of the two stitches that they're attached to, that's where I'm gonna go up and under. So I'm gonna start back here and I have a curved needle to do this. So I am going to go in the black up under and right here. That's where I'm gonna come up going to pull my thread and I am not going to make this complicated I'm just gonna go right back down on the red so that I mark where the line is so right there okay and then I'm going to take the piece that I started with, the one that was just hanging on while I did everything, and I'm gonna go through the same stitch and back down through the body. There we go. That kind of holds it in place. So see, it's a little detail, but it's nice because it, it shows that he's got, you know, like a zipper or something. Then I'm going to go out the body somewhere on the bottom and put both strings through the same hole and tie a knot. 
I know you probably can't see what I'm doing. If it helps, I can't either. <laughs> but basically, I'm going to go through the same hole. I hope it's through the same hole, but they're all black, so that's good. <laughs> Everything is black here, so that's good. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to tie a knot. Oh, my needle did not come out. Come on. I obviously made this string way too long, but that's okay. And then I'm going to cut this shorter just to work with it because it's way too long. And then of course I'm going to hide the tails, pull them out, cut them out, you know. So there we go. And there's Charlie Brown. Now follow the steps that you did for Charlie Brown's collar to make Linus's collar. Now, Charlie Brown has this little curly cue in his head because that is his hair. I have a Sharpie Ultra Fine Retractable here, and that is how I'm going to do that. If you guys ever want me to make a tutorial on how I use Sharpie on my pieces, let me know. So there is his little curly cue. It's not exactly even because, well, my hand shook and that's what happened. I just had to go with it, but that's okay because he has a hat. <laughs> so that is Charlie Brown. Now let's add the details to Linus. Linus actually has hair. <laughs> he does, but it's cartoon lines hair. So I'm just gonna use my Sharpie. I'm just gonna give him little cartoon bangs. Not a lot of hair peeking out of his hat. Obviously you can embroider this if you want to. I just don't want to. <laughs> there we go. Give him a few pieces on the side here. So now we have Linus and Charlie Brown. If you guys have made these, please, please tag me on Instagram, email me, or put it in the Facebook group. I have to see these tots. I know so many of you were excited to make them, and I have to see them. Please show them to me. I would love to see your tots. Remember, if you want Linus's blanket, you gotta join the private Facebook group down below. There is a quick little pattern on there, and I, oh, I love spoiling you guys. Remember, life happens, yarn helps, and Spoonies can stitch it up too. Bye.